Welcome along to our second part of installing Windows Small Business Server 2003 presented by Satin Alliance. The first part in this series took you through the installation of Small Business Server onto new hardware by basically inserting the CD, booting to that CD and then installing the base level environment in a DOS window. Once that part is complete, you boot into the graphical user interface, complete the basics setup of Windows Server, and then finally, after another reboot, you returned to the screen that we currently see, where Windows Small Business Server wants to continue on with the setup. So to continue on, we simply click Next to launch the set setup. Here we'll see that the server installation will check to make sure that there is enough um, memory, disk space, and that the system meets the basic requirements. If it doesn't, you'll receive a warning or even perhaps something that will stop you from installing the product. But in our case, everything appears correct, so we go next. In here, we will insert our phone number, our fax number, our address details. It's always very good to complete this saves us repeating it for every user when we create users. In this case we can continue on without entering any text. Okay, here we're now presented with what we want to choose for our internal domain. This is basically our uh, domain name and it is suggested to, again, keep it simple, avoid use of special characters like question marks, backslashes, and full stops. Um, in this case, we're going to change it from local to .loc. This prevents any clashing with Macintosh computers that may be installed on our small business server at a later stage. As you can see, we can also change the server name here if we so desire. So at this stage, it all looks good. I've made that change. I go next. I'll now be presented with a warning basically telling me that the small business server installation um, wants to change the domain to dot local. Um, we're happy with the fact that we've set it to dot loc, lock, so we don't need to return to this page and change it. So we go no, and the installation once again continues on. Now because we've got two network cards installed on this computer as you can see down here near the clock, we're now asked to choose which network adapter will function as our internal or our LAN based connector. So we'll just pick the top connector and continue on. The next thing we're asked for is an IP address of our server. Uh, basically, this will set the precedent or the IP address and submask or the IP network for our small business server. By default, the small business server will make the network 192.168.16.2. You can change this to any valid address. The recommendation is you should never use an internet-based address. You should use a reserved one. In this case, we'll stick with what has been recommended by small business server and hit the next button to continue. We're now prompted to enter our administrator password so that the system can log in when it continues through on its installation process. So we enter the administrator password and click next again. And again, the initial part will configure the IP address on our machine, will change the server name and set the domain name. We're now happy with this, we now hit the next button, and as you can see, those changes will start to be implemented, and when complete, the installation will automatically reboot our machine and bring us back to a Windows login. Once the initial 
setup and reconfiguration of the server is complete, reboot is finished. You return to an installation screen here where you can choose where you want to install your applications and which applications you want to install on your small business server. So as we can see, we can choose whether we want to install the server tools or not and things like Exchange. So if we don't want to install Exchange on our machine, we can choose none here and it won't be installed. Over here on the right, we can also choose to install these applications on a different drive. In this case, we only have a single drive, but if we had additional partitions configured on our machine, we could select those. Once we've made our selections, we hit the next button to continue. You'll now be presented with a list of data folders. Here we can go in and select a data folder and make a change by selecting the button down here and we can relocate things like the Exchange Store. Again, because we only have a single drive in this situation, we just hit the next button to continue. We're now presented with a summary of the components we're going to install and also their disk requirements. If we're happy with this, we then hit the next button to continue. The Small Business Server installation will then continue on with the options that we've selected and basically install and configure the components on our machine. As you can see, this installation process will continue. When required, Small Business Server will prompt you for disk 2 and disk 3 of the installation package so that it can continue. When the installation is complete, you'll see a screen asking you to finish the process. Simply click the finish re button and the system will now reboot. After the system is rebooted, it will automatically re-log in and you'll be presented with the Small Business Server to-do list. At this point in time, you have a functional Small Business Server. However, if you have purchased the Premium Edition, you will need to install those components. Also, if you wish to install the R2 technologies, they also need to be installed. Please note that the process of installing these will be covered in future how-to videos from Satin Alliance. This ends our current presentation. Remember, if you have any questions about the material here, please contact me, robert at satinalliance.com.au. Thank you very much for watching.